feeling a good nap and I get home. You tired today? Yeah. Alright, so we have a couple maintenance things to take care of you guys. Uh, number one, thank you for those who attended class yesterday. So let's just make sure we understand expectations. Okay? When when um Dr. or when Mr. V sends out uh, an email and phone call about the synchronous learning day, you are required to attend class. It's not optional. It's not a virtual day where you can just do your work whenever you want to. You're to log into class. Classes still run just like this, you guys. Yes, honey. The clock is running like a stage on true mode from starting. Um, we have a test next week, so I would. How about you stay here for a little bit, then you can go down there, okay? okay. So just a little bit, and then go. Down. Um. So it's not that you can. It's a day, a day at home where you can make up work. It's a day where you're supposed to log into each of your classes and attend class. The teacher logs in and teaches the whole period. Okay. So those of you who didn't log in yesterday, you guys missed the whole class. Okay. I was logged in. I thought, yeah, I have attended. It, it automatically tracks you if you log in. I get a printout report, and it sends it to my email. Okay. So. With that said, if you don't log in, you don't get credit for the day because it is mandatory that you log in and attend class. So anyone who did not attend class, you have a zero. And it's not a zero you can make up. It's just a zero because you did not attend class on a mandatory class day. Okay? So just giving you the heads up about that. Those of you who were good little noodles and attended class, you guys got also a Q rock because you guys showed... Um, you were responsible and you showed ownership over your work. So you guys all got one of those Pew Rock tickets for the draw, the drawing they do. Okay? No, no, no. It goes, it's now all electronic, so you don't physically get it. I put it in electronically. So just letting you know, if you attend a class, I put in an electronic Pew Rock for you. Um, so everyone should have a worksheet in front of them unless they were late to class. If you're late to class, raise your hand and we'll get you a worksheet. Um, if you didn't attend class yesterday, it is online, so let me show you that as well. So please remember, this is just a refresher for you guys. You always go to the Get Started page. This was yesterday. This is a live teaching from yesterday, so you're gonna wanna click on that to see the, the lesson from yesterday if you didn't attend class. Um, this was the this is what you were to complete yesterday. But again, complete in this, that's awesome. You don't have to share it with me because I can't give you credit because you didn't attend class on a required day, okay? Um, and this was the link. So it tells you what period, what time you should have showed up to class. And if you clicked on this link, it would have taken you virtually right into the classroom, okay? So... On virtual days, it's really easy, you guys, to come to class. Oh, wait, so I have a question. So if you're, like, home sick, like, you, like if you still join those, do you get points? Or like yeah. Uh-huh. So now if you're home sick, you don't, you wouldn't, like, so if it's a, a required virtual learning day, like yesterday, and you have a doctor's note, it'll show in a system that you were excused and you wouldn't get a zero in for yesterday. But it has to show in the system that you had a doctor's note and you're excused. Because it would be the same thing if it was an actual in-class day. Okay? Because essentially what, what that means is if you didn't show up to class, you were marked as a cut. So anyone who didn't show up to class yesterday, you cut class. Okay? So now... Those of you who were in class yesterday, this you can work ahead because um, this stuff should be a pretty easy for you guys. Those of you who weren't, you might have to follow along for a little bit um, until you get the hang of it. Okay. So it says draw or the directions say write a linear equation for each of the following graphs. So again, in class yesterday we discussed in order to do this, you first need to identify the y-intercept and slope. Okay. So you need the y-intercept and the 
and then you're going to identify the slope. I, I, as I suggested yesterday, always go for the y-intercept first. There's no calculate in there. You're literally just looking at the graph and stating what the y-intercept is. And again, the y-intercept is self-explanatory, right? The name explains itself. So you have the y-axis, right? And it's saying where on this y-axis does the linear line intersect? Where does it cross? So you can see it crosses right here, okay, and this point is zero. So your y-intercept is zero, okay. Now for slope, okay, again, remember that's your vertical change over your horizontal change, okay. When you don't have data points on there, you have to create two of your own data points. That's the only way you can calculate slope. You need two data points. Remember, I told you, it has to be points where the X and the Y exactly intersect. Okay? And the reason for that is because if you choose a point in between the box, there are approximation points. Okay? So where you might say, call this 1.5, someone else might call that 1.4, or someone else might call it 1.3, or someone could call that 1.6. So the problem is not everyone would have the same slope if you used an in-between data point, so that's why you can't use them. You have to use a data point where it exactly crosses and you have an exact whole number, okay? because then everyone has the same slope. No matter what data point cross you use, so it exactly crosses there, it exactly crosses here, it exactly crosses here. No matter which two data points you use, as long as you use where it exactly crosses, everyone will get the same slope, okay? The only way you get different slopes is if you use an approximation cross. So we don't use them, all right? So again, you can choose any of the data points where it exactly crosses. You'll still get the same slope. I'm just going to use these two points, okay? And you can say it goes up one and it goes over one, all right? So you have a slope of one over one. And I'll show you if I use two different data points, you'll get the same slope if it's exactly where it crossed. So say I didn't use that one and I used this one, all right? Then I would have went up two, over two, okay? Two over two is equivalent to one. One over one is equivalent to one. Same exact slope, okay? Yesterday, I also showed the kiddos yesterday, for those of you who are still getting mixed up on how to correctly count the slope and the shift change. Okay, it's really important. Some of you guys are, when you're counting your line, you're counting the line that your data point starts on. You have to think about what slope actually means. Okay, slope is talking about the change between two data points. When you look at this data point, okay, if you count that line, is there any change there? The data points started on that line. Okay, so I have my pink tape here. Okay, my feet are starting right here on my pink tape. If I count the pink tape, am I making any change? Did my feet move at all? My feet have, they haven't moved. So I can't start the, count the line I'm starting on because remember what slope means. You're, you're trying to calculate the change. Y2 minus Y1, X2 minus X1. There's no change. But now if I, Step a box, now you see there's a change in my distance. There's some type of displacement, okay? So for the kids yesterday, I said maybe it might help you to count the distance better if you consider this almost like leapfrog, like you're jumping over rocks, okay? So if you can't physically jump over it, it doesn't count as a movement. So like that would be one. That would be two, okay? You're not jumping anywhere here. 
so you know this doesn't count. Okay? So again, think of it like you're jumping over the rock. One, two. Okay? So that was a two. I'm jumping over the rock, right? So you gotta think about one, two. Okay? That might help you count the lines more efficiently. Alright, so now it's telling you to write that linear equation. And we know the format to write the linear equation is always y equals mx plus b. We said m equals your slope and your b is your y-intercept. Okay? So this is your b and this is your m. Okay? So now you're simply plugging these numbers into this formula and you have your linear equation. So I'm going to say y equals m, my m was 1, x, remember that's an x, that's not a time sign, x a variable, it's a letter, plus my b is 0. So your linear equation for this line is y equals 1x plus 0. Okay? If I want to simplify it, which you don't need to do this, it would simply be y equals x. Okay, because you can drop the zero, you can drop the one coefficient. The one coefficient isn't necessary, it's automatically assumed. Okay, again, you don't have to do it. If you did this, this is fine. Okay. Let's try two, and then I'll have you guys try three on your own. All right, so we always say the easiest first step is to identify that y-intercept. Okay, this is your y-axis, and your y-intercept is where your linear line crosses your y-axis. So you see the cross is right here, so it crosses at 1. Okay, so your y-intercept. equals 1. All right. All right. So next thing you want to do is slope. Remember, you always do your vertical shift over your horizontal shift. Okay, so you should be drawing a triangle is what you should see. Now using our new method of hopping over rocks, okay, let's see what the movement is. So you start from your data point, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I know my numerator is six, but I'm going down, so it's negative 6. Okay, hopping over rocks here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You hop until you reach that data point, right? Okay, I hopped to my right, so that's positive. Okay. Now my linear equation Okay, remember my y intercept is the variable b and my slope is the variable m. This is the format to write a linear equation. So I'm going to say y equals m and my m is negative 6 over 8. x plus b, and my b is 1. Final answer. Okay.
we doing, you guys? Good. All right, I want you guys to try three and four, and then we'll look at the back. Okay. Here, it's just seven and nine. Okay, that's fine. Seven and nine. It must be labeled wrong. Huh? It's all good. Yeah, okay, fine. Seven and nine it is. You know, sometimes Miss Fisher is in the middle of doing a lot of different things. And you need coffee. Yep, and I need coffee too. Yep. So, even though it's. So, here we do go to class right now. No, no, no. You have to cross the Y. That, that's so the thing. It would be three. Yep. It's not perfectly like the line. Or is that just the it's way it's Well, it's supposed to. Well, it's supposed to exactly cross the technically to this one. It's 2.5. But I would give you one where it doesn't exactly cross. I have to I have to be where exactly it touches the Y. So I would write 2.5? Yeah, 2.5 for that one. So the Y intersect? 2.5. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, it's po that's positive, I remember. This is positive, it's negative. Yep. You mean how they find the y intercept? Because yeah. it's where it crosses the y line. So would it be three or yeah. mm -hmm. Yeah, 
Yeah. Okay. Well, I think Mrs. Finkel, she's helping you, right? Or do you need my help, Mrs. Finkel? No, I was just about the one that you kind of doesn't exactly solve. There is one, Adrian. <laughs> I do apologize. There is one. It's whichever you're more comfortable with. So, or you, if you want to tell the truth, it's 2.5. That's yeah. <laughs> yep. Yes, honey. So I see everyone's done the front. So let's look at the back real quick. And Adrian, once you're done the front, honey, you can go down to your Valentine's party. I'll show you so much to do. <laughs> I wish. I got to keep teaching. But thank you for the invite. She can't. She can What? See, you should have brought me some candy. That, that would have been awesome. I did. <laughs> okay. All right, friends, so our back. So this time the instructions say, I'm pretty sure it just tells you to graph the linear equation. Yeah. Okay, so this time I give you the linear equation. I say y equals 2x minus 3. So this side actually is easier than the front side. And now I'm asking you to graph it. Okay? So you need to remember the format y equals m x plus b, and that this m is your slope, and b is your y-intercept, okay? So first, your y-intercept is negative 3, and your slope is 2. Now, again, it's really important for you to remember, a slope you need a numerator over a denominator, okay? You have a vertical shift and a horizontal shift. So remember in the beginning of the school year, I told you any whole number you can always put over one because it does not change the value of that whole number. So two is equivalent to two over one. Okay, the value does not change. It's the same thing. So I'm going to put the slope 2. It says 2, but I'm going to put it over 1 so that now I can create my line. Okay? So step 1 would be you are going to graph your y-intercept. So remember, this is your y-line. So you're going to go to your y-line. You're going to go to negative 3. And you're going to put your data point. Okay? And then from there, you utilize your slope to create your next data point. So it tells me I go up 2 and to the right 1 because they're both positive. So I go up 1, 2 to the right 1. Up 1, 2 to the right 1. Up 1, 2 to the right 1. Okay? Then I draw my line, and voila, you have graphed your linear equation, and that's it. It's that simple, you guys.
So let's look at the next one. Because I do want to get to the I ready um, to make sure we're all on the same page with the I ready. And I reassigned the I ready to give you an extension till this Sunday in case some of you guys are confused. Okay. If you've already completed it and you did fine, and there are a couple of you that have, then you don't have to worry about the one I reassigned because it's the same one. But if some of you guys were unable to complete it because you thought it was too confusing, I reassigned this I ready today and extended it until this Sunday for you to turn it in. Okay? So this is the linear equation that you were given. And you have to first identify your slope. Gavin, what's my slope? Cole, what's my slope? Perfect. The negative 4. So negative 4. All right, Gavin, what's my y-intercept? 9. Perfect. Good job, Gavin. So when graphing, you always start with your y-intercept, okay? So again, this is my y-axis. So I go to my y-axis, and I go to number 9, and I create that data point. Again, you need a numerator and a denominator, so I'm going to create this over 1. Since that's a negative 4, that means I need to go down 4 and to the right 1, okay? So I'm going down 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right 1. Down 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right 1, okay? Down 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right 1. Then you just draw your line, and you have your linear equation graph. Okay. Okay. So now let's take a look at the I ready I asked you guys to complete this week. So I want everyone to take out their computers, and we're going to take a look at the I ready. I'll give you guys a second, so don't worry. Wait, I still have the I know. I just want to look at some of the stuff. Okay, so some of you guys said you were a little bit confused. I looked at the quiz. And I think the only question that might be a little tricky is this first one. You still should have been able to get the first one if you, you just had a problem solve a little bit. Okay? So, this first one says, which of the following statements is not, not true? That means three of them are correct. Okay? The slope of AC is two-thirds. So this one, okay, I get it if it tripped you up because... I didn't make you reduce any of the fractions, okay? I told you whatever slope you found, you could keep it in that form because I wasn't testing you on how to simplify a fraction. So, okay, if you look at AC, right, and we do our method, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 
So your numerator was 6, and your denominator is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Your denominator is 9. Well, as long as you can reduce, you, you would know 6 ninths is equivalent to 2 thirds. Why? Because you can divide 3. You can divide 6. 3 goes into 6, and 3 goes into 9. So that means the fraction you can reduce and make it smaller. You can simplify the fraction. So 3 goes into 6 2 times, and 3 goes into 9 3 times. So that means 6 ninths is equivalent to 2 thirds. So yes, the slope of AC is indeed 2 thirds. The ratios of the rise to the run for the triangle are equivalent. Yes. Okay. Remember, in your first note packet for slope, slope is about the ratio of rise over run. Okay, you always have rise over run. A fraction, any fraction, is considered a ratio. This is correct statement. AB has the same slope as AC. Yes. If you recall from the first lesson, I told you, that a slope is measuring the steepness of this line, which is a constant ratio. Whether you're here on the line, or here on the line, or here on the line, it is a constant, consistent ratio, which means the, the slope here is the same as the slope here, as the same as the slope here, the same as the slope here. That's why it doesn't matter if I try to calculate the slope between these two points or between these two points, it will always be the same because it's a constant, consistent ratio. So yes, the slope of AB is different. No, it is not different. The slope on this line will always be the same no matter where you start on the line. It's always the same, okay? So that was the only one, honestly, that I say was a little bit tough that you had to think about, okay? So I give you that one, all right? Now all these other ones, should you guys should be able to do. What's the y-intercept in the equation y equals 4x minus 3? Okay, so we've been doing this, right? So we said y equals mx plus b. And we said this part is your y-intercept. Okay, so that means right here is your y-intercept. So negative 3 is your y-intercept. Okay, so we've been doing this, you guys. You should be able to, this lesson you should be able to do. Okay, so again, even though two data points aren't drawn on here, I taught you how to figure out where to draw the data points, right? So it has to be exactly where they're crossing. An easy, real easy data point to always use is that y-intercept, okay? So you go to your y-line, and wherever your line's crossing on your y-line, use that point. That's an automatic given point, okay? Then you just have to find another point where they exactly cross. So it exactly crosses here, okay? Now remember, it's your vertical shift over your horizontal shift. So I move one, two, so I got two on top. And I move one to the right, one on bottom. Two over one is the same thing as two, okay? So again, you're just looking at this line, and you're saying, where on this y-axis, so where on your y-axis does your linear line cross? Well, it crosses right there. So if this is 0, then this must be 1. 
okay? So it crosses at one, right? And remember, I, I told you the origin is always zero, okay? Okay, so we were just doing this too, you guys. Ready? So the equation of the lines. First thing you're going to want to identify, which will help you rule out two answers right from get-go, is your y-intercept. So again, where does the line, the linear line, cross your y-axis? It crosses right here. So if this is 0, this is 1, this is 2, okay? So you know your y-intercept has to be 2. Okay, so this one would work. This one can't work because it's negative 4. This one can't work. It's negative 4. And this one would work. Okay, so now we got to look at the slope. Is the slope 1 half or is it 2? So now calculate your slope. All right, again, using your y-intercept is an easy one to use. Use that data point. Then find a data point where it exactly crosses. Well, you can't use that one, right? It's in the middle of the square. This one exactly crosses, so I can use that one. All right? I go up one, and I hop over two, so it's one half. Okay? So it has to be this one, one half x plus two. And we will stop there. But... As you can see, the questions on this one is the exact questions we've been going over. So you should be able to do this I ready. Okay? So again, I extended it till Sunday. So please complete it over the weekend and then shoot me an email when you completed it and I'll input your grade. Okay? All right, guys. Bye.